Welcome to ALD Stories, a series chronicling the personal journeys of the people behind atomical air deposition, untold stories of the technology, and deep dives into the history, development, and future of ALD. I'm your host, Tyler Myers, bringing you this podcast from Benick, the home of ALD. For episode 29, AOD Stories is excited to welcome Dr. Suvi Halka to the show. Suvi is a former executive technologist at ASM, an ASM fellow, an ALD innovator awardee, and most importantly, one of the integral people in introducing ALD to the semiconductor industry in the 2000s. Suvi began her ALD career at Microchemistry in Finland, working on atomic layer epitaxy on catalysts under the direction of ALD technology inventor Tuomo Suntola. She continued with microchemistry as head of the Thin Film Development Group before spending most of her time teaching the world's biggest semiconductor companies like Intel and Samsung about ALD. In this episode, Suvi and I discuss how she started working with ALD, what it was like to do a PhD with Duomo Sontola, and how the makeup of microchemistry changed over the years. We also discuss the circumstances surrounding the ASM acquisition, how development changed under the new leadership, and how it felt pitching ALD to the semiconductor industry. Sufi had a long career working in ALD and laid down a foundation for which the entire community should be very grateful. It was wonderful to have her join me at Benick, and I cannot thank her enough for talking about her experiences through the pivotal years of ALD adoption. So with that, please grab your tea or coffee and enjoy episode 29 with ASM's Suvi Halka. Welcome listeners to another episode of ALD Stories. I'm here with Suvi Halka. I am very, very excited to have you here today, Suvi. Uh, Suvi is a former executive technologist at ASM. ASM Fellow, ALD Innovator Award, maybe perhaps the one of the sole people that helped us get ALD into the semiconductor industry. So we have a lot of fun things to talk about today, and I'm really happy that we were able to get you here to Benick so we could have this conversation. You're welcome. Yeah, thank you. Nice to, nice to be here. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so yeah, as we just spoke maybe a few seconds ago, maybe we can get started just talking about your initial background and how you found yourself working in, in ALD, especially since it was a time when ALD was still you know, fairly young as a technology. It would be interesting to know how you found yourself even in the field to start. Mm. Yeah, yes, I could, I could start. It's a bit, maybe a little bit long story, but uh, I, I graduated in uh, 1986 from radiochemistry department. And then I stayed in the university. I started doing uh, my, my kind of my thesis. I I already had three publications, but uh, then somehow all the time I was thinking that I I do not really want to stay in the university. And, and and then one day I was in our corridor and looking at the note board, and there was a very small note like this size mm -hmm. and there was a note that they were looking for a student to work work in the academy of finland funded project and that project was atomic layer epitaxy mm -hmm. and i didn't know what epitaxy is atomic layer epitaxy no nothing but then the lady who had put the note there eva lakoma I knew her because her background was also in radiochemistry. I didn't know her so well, but I thought maybe I call her and, and, and maybe there could be something. And then she said that, could you come and see us? Tuomo Suntola mm -hmm. and, and her and in Keinoniemi, I told you where the microchemistry was located at that time. And then, the, then my colleague, um, Jukka Lehto, who then became the professor of radiochemistry later, he, he told me, oh, please take your, uh, uh, these um, articles, what we have done, that you can show that what you have, what you have been uh, doing. I had a one hour meeting with uh, Tuoma and Eva, and we were just discussing. And then uh, we went to the, see the, the reactors, and he told me that when you hear the knocks, Nux, Nux, that's one atomic layer. And I said, uh huh. Yeah, something like that. Yes, okay. <laughs> the sound to it. <laughs> <The> sound <laughs> of it. <laughs> Those were the F 120s. Mm -hmm. I think at the time there was two, two F 120s. <laughs> and, uh, and then when we had done that, I was just leaving, and then Tuomo said, uh, just come. come. Do you like a try that? We are happy to have you here. And then I said, oh, nice. And then, but I said, 
can I can I contact you uh, tomorrow <laughs> about my decision? And then of course I decided that I will go, but I knew nothing about what this was going to happen. But I can say that uh, I I have been really lucky because they they already had Eva Lakoma told me later that they already had one guy who was supposed to start in that project, mm -hmm. but he never got his uh, studies finished. Oh, so, oh, because oh. Academy of Finland wanted to that you had your master's degree sure. already, and he couldn't finish by the time they had to start the project. So, they were kind of in a hurry. So, when I was interviewed, I was not so good, probably, but uh, Evan probably also partly knew me. So, then I got that, that, uh, uh, that possibility to work in that project. Okay, so you did your PhD basically with the... the uh, that's how I did my PhD, not in the university, I did uh -huh. it at microchemistry. So you kind of did it under Suntola? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there was Suntola yeah. and, and Eva Lakoma, okay. my, my supervisors, when I was doing my, my, my thesis. Okay, so what was it like to work with, with Suntola as your advisor? And then I guess maybe that relationship changed after the PhD was finished a little bit, but... Oh, it was, <laughs> it was sometimes... Uh, I. I'm, I'm just soaking when I say, say uh -huh. that it was a little bit terrifying. <laughs> because he had a happy every Friday. He's, he, he went and see everybody, those 12 people, and, uh, and asked how, how is it going. And you had to kind of kind of explain to him what you had done mm -hmm. and uh, what your results are and things like that. So it was, it was a little bit exciting to do that. But gradually, when I uh, had been there this couple of years and uh, done a lot already, and then we had much more people, when, when he came to my room and asked what I have been doing, I could, I could realize that he was just looking through the window and not <laughs> so much concentrating. <laughs> because, of course, it was difficult for him to follow everything that mm -hmm. we were doing. I'm sure that... Uh... Yeah having invented the technology and then having this group all working on it is you you so badly want to know every detail of what's what's going on but yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> of course gradually for him it was difficult to follow mm -hmm. follow everything but of course he's he's really because he knew ALD in and out so it was easy kind of for mm -hmm. him but then this uh, this this uh, catalyst research and doing ALD on porous materials of course, that was really new to him, mm -hmm, sure. and he was very uh, happy and excited to realize that we could very, uh, in uh, really in atomic level, to see how how the precursors form to the surface. I am I'm really happy and um, grateful to Tuomas Suntola because when I was doing my PhD at microchemistry, and when it was finished, I I, I cut my salary from Academy of Finland directly. So I was not in the payroll of uh, microchemistry. And early 90s, the times were not so good. Mm -hmm. So I was a little bit afraid that uh, there is no money, that they could uh, hire me uh, then to be a permanent uh, mm -hmm. or to, uh, to work really uh, in the payroll of microchemistry. And, but luckily, Thomas Untola could get the money somewhere. So I could continue. Then in the beginning of 1994. And when you started then after your PhD, did you continue Co doing continue, the yeah, yeah, the work in the catalyst group. Okay, great. So you were explaining to me a little bit earlier how how the uh, microchemistry was set up. So you just had the the catalyst group and the the PB group. Yeah. And the, how did that then change over the next few years leading up to the eventual ASM acquisition? So 1994, I continued the microchemistry, and then Eva Lakoma joined in the beginning of 1997, 1996. Eva Lakoma joined or went to work directly to Neste Oil Company in the catalyst mm -hmm. area, and then and Tuomo asked me that if I could be the catalyst technology manager then at microchemistry. So I I joined that. And then, uh, in the beginning of 1996, 
um, and then in the beginning of 1997, there started to be plans that the catalyst and photovoltaic part would be separated from the reactor development part. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and then that happened in the, in the beginning of 1998. But the reason why there was a possibility <laughs> To do this separation, that then then the catalyst and photovoltaic would stay directly at the Neste company, and then then uh, then the uh, reactor development would be form its own company, and that would be microchemistry. And the reason uh, for why this actually could happen was so that the reactor development uh, area at microchemistry had grown gradually inside mm -hmm. inside microchemistry. So Tuomo Suntola was really, I would say, really clever and how he did it. He always wanted to get some money from Este Oil Company to do also reactor development. And that part in, at microchemistry grew uh, during the years. I see. And when I was a catalyst uh, technology manager, I remember being so mad at some time that there was this funny 10% that was always taken from the catalyst mm -hmm. research money to the reactor development. But of course, later I've been happy about that. <laughs> <laughs> did, it, did it make you want to get the money back or did it make you want to be part of the reactor no, development group? <laughs> no, no, but I, we can come to that too, but it's, it's that... Uh, it was really interesting that how how he could, and also what he did during that time, he hired um, this Jorma Anson, who used to work with him at Leinar when they invented the AAT technology. He he made a, a search, a literature search, or um, to see that uh, is there potential new applications for AAT, mm -hmm. and of course they found out that semiconductor industry. Could be, could be the one, uh, but and and that's why the then the I would say that the reactor development that grew and, and that's why we have Ukka Soin in it. Mm -hmm. So we used to look at Leonard Soin, and was what was a head of that uh, department. Um, but like I said, that then in the in the beginning of nineteen ninety eight. Uh, the, the, it was the separation of the catalyst research and the photovoltaic research from the reactor development. Uh, but it was 1997 when that, uh, that discussion and, and, and possible separation, um, they started to plan. I went to see Tuomo Suntola and said that I would like to change to the uh, reactor development and mm -hmm. infield development area, not not to stay and go to work for Neste Oil Company. And then he said, oh, now you solved my problem. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> no, because he, uh, he said that he didn't have anybody to take over the, the, the actual research, what was supposed to be okay. done in the thin film area. So only people to do the develop, reactor development, but nobody to do the thin film. Oh, okay. Of yeah. course, there were people who were doing the development, but he wanted to have somebody to lead mm -hmm. that group. But I remember that when he said, oh, Suri, now you now you solved my problem. And then I moved to the reactor. But the, the one big reason was because I told him that I, I don't see that the catalyst development, what we do or anything, will go to that point that somebody would start using AAD mm -hmm. to make catalysts in a huge amount. Of course, maybe nowadays they can they can do something, but I didn't see any anything else but just uh, research. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and then I thought that if I go to Neste, then there's no AAD. Right, right. And you were getting so good at doing it. Yeah, yeah. yeah so <laughs> that made, I don't know if I was good, but I, I liked it, like you mm -hmm. said. That, Then, then I moved to, uh, to, to the other, to the work de development and field field development depart department. Okay. And then it was in the beginning of 1998 when Tuomo Suntola then stopped being uh, the managing director. We got a new managing director, Matti Ernast. And 
again when the Shinto arrived. I think he started working part time uh, as, a, as a consultant in the university. Okay, so then the microchemistry started to work a little bit more independently from Mr. Villa at that point. Yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes. So then so. That, that's six year period then from when you started with uh, with the thin film and the reactor development yeah, group yeah, and yeah. between then and then the eventual acquisition by ASO and I imagine those six years were a very different time than your years in microchemistry doing the catalyst. Yeah, 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 yeah. So was there always kind of this air of okay, we need to develop something to push a, an eventual acquisition? Was everything being moved towards semiconductor at that point? So did you go straight from like doing catalyst work to then developing thin films for semiconductor applications? Oh, it was both uh, semiconductor and 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 uh, uh, display industry. Right. Oh, because okay. we had uh, both at that time. Because that's how we started. The first uh, reactors were, were sold to the display industry. Right. Uh, not so many, but... Uh, but and then, then the semiconductor industry, of course, it became also important, but of course more important after the acquisition of microchemistry. So during um, during that time, what kind of equipment and, and processes did the microchemistry have leading up to the to the acquisition? So, so. Uh, we first had the um, of course, if we start the EOS was the F one twenty, and then F four fifty. It was the forty times forty times centimeters glass substrates mm -hmm. for the display industry, and uh, then uh, even. Before the acquisition, we um, and there was uh, also the Soyne, so the, there was the uh, development of so-called F two hundred. It is the the first version of the Pulsar two thousand that uh, you could make uh, two films on two hundred millimeter silicon okay. wafers, and and that tool we already ha had. When then ASM acquired microchemistry, okay. and we had we had sold, I don't remember those those things how how many, but not 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 very many, of course at that time. But so. Was it a similar design like a cross flow? Yeah, cross, yeah, that's wafer. the cross flow. Yeah, mm -hmm. cross flow mm -hmm. single wafer reactor. Yes. Okay, so really true precursor. So and that's that's also. that's what we also then used in, in the I mean our development. And so were you then were you were working on the thin film yeah. part during this time? So yeah. were you working on these specifically on these reactors to create processes for them, or were you doing more like small scale R and D and then somebody else was kind of transferring it to the tools? No, we, uh, we, uh, we did did both. So I, I I have to say that I, I was not so much in the lab because my <laughs> part was also I was visiting customers uh, with the Armos Carp and, and, and doing things like that. So I was more leading leading the research. So I was not really hands on in, anymore at that time. So, but but uh, in in our group we had both the small reactors and then also the F F F two hundred because then we started making samples. To the, the customers, potential customers, to show what what we can do. Who, if you can say, <laughs> who were some of the the customers that you got were getting to visit at that point? Uh, of course, I have visited most of the, the, the those big the big customers in the semiconductor area mm -hmm. at that time. So there was the, uh, of course, there was the IBM, uh, Intel, Motorola. Then there was uh, TSMC. Uh, uh, UMC, then uh, the companies in Korea, and so on. Mm -hmm. and every, everywhere where they would put uh, potentially like to or need those tools and A and B. So this was even prior to the ASM. I yeah, yeah, not not all the companies. So there were mm -hmm. some, of course. Um, I would say that the IBM uh, was kind of the first 
and then of course you have also the corporate job. So what was the reaction of people at these companies when you would go there and, and pitch them the technology? Were they skeptical that ALD was so good or were they excited? Yeah, but that, 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 that's what's kind of interesting. So I, I was the uh, typically who was explaining the ALD, um, how it works and what can happen and what mm-hmm. we can do and, and so on. Uh, many people, they doubt it. Many, many, uh, many research they doubt it. And, and that's, I have been laughing later that after a few years that those people who tried to convince me and uh, tried to tell me that they don't believe in ALD mm-hmm. or that mm-hmm. it cannot work like that and we cannot have what we are telling, later they would tell in their own presentations, oh, ALD is so great, it can do mm-hmm. this and this and this. And, and, and I was, yeah, yeah. And I, I felt also still before ASM, but also during ASM time that I'm like a pilgrim. So like a religious person that I am going to tell those people how great ALD is. Right. And <laughs> so it was, it was really interesting. I'm sure there are a lot of like CBD folks and people like this who are like, oh, yeah, yeah, of we course, don't, of course, we don't yes. need this. Like CBD works, it works great. We can continue, continue doing it this way. And, yeah, yeah. And it was, um, uh, and one time I was at Sematec. They, they, they gave me, uh, they said that they can give me one hour that I can give, uh, give my presentation. And, and then there were quite many people, I think mm-hmm. 15 or something. And, and then, then the, the head of the R&D department at the time, kind of interesting. And, and then I started and I was explaining. And then, then the, uh, the uh, head of the department said, oh, now I understand. And then he asked one of uh, these uh, colleagues that could you go and, and we can extend the time. So I was supposed to have only one hour mm-hmm. presentation time, but I had two and a half hours there. Wow. So then they started asking. And it was interesting that finally. <laughs> yeah, some, something clicked. Some, some yeah. clicked, especially <laughs> in the, in the, in the uh, head of the department, <laughs> in his head. So, so it was. And, and, and uh, I would say that it was a privilege to be at that stage to explain people and there was a lot of interest like one time uh, at Samsung because ASM used to have those technical uh, meetings and mm-hmm. then uh, we prepared presentations, uh, different topics of course ASM was also selling not only, not only ALD equipment. And one time at Samsung, uh, then we had these, and then there, there were a few people coming to the room uh, for the other presentations. And then when my turn came, that room was packed with people. So there was maybe there was uh, five, six people normally listening, and then then there was at least 20, 30 people, young guys came mm-hmm. from the room, and many researchers came to the room and listened to me. <laughs> <laughs> did, did it ever feel intim- intimidating to be in those situations? Yeah, yeah, it was, oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it was uh, nice to uh, think uh, now later that what, what it was. But yeah, but of course it was not me, but it was the ALD because it was really, and of course, as everybody knows, Samsung has done a lot of the capabilities of mm-hmm. doing ALD research. It has one of these years being huge. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, so they, they... yeah but I, I could, maybe I go back to this um, 1998 uh, when they sure. were the, the other microchemistry started only the, developing the, the reactors. So um, like, like when we, we or the reactor developer group developed the F, F200, mm-hmm. Uh, so before then ASM acquired us, um, I already had done an, an application uh, to uh, Tekes at the time, the, the business development, what it's nowadays called. Mm-hmm. And I already had listed uh, things that we should start uh, developing a 300 millimeter tool. 
on what what we then did uh, under under ASM, and and we got accepted. So we the the, the oh, application good. was accepted. We got the, I think a fair amount of money. Of course, not enough for developing everything, but there was already listed everything that what we should be doing, and and then ASM. Like it's known, uh, you are acquired by the chemist again, nineteen ninety nine. That's good. So you were already developing the, or at least had the the plans for the three hundred millimeter yeah, tool yeah, when yeah. the acquisition happened. Yeah. Now, how did things change then after ASM acquired microchemistry? Was it still kind of business as usual, or did the kind of strategic direction shift a little bit with a uh, new new leadership? Of course. When when and a bigger company comes and takes you over, uh, there was uh, there was more work, but and and and, and one thing was that uh, that what I noticed was of course uh, Dutch people because it was a Dutch company, mm-hmm. so they are very uh, not they they are nice nice people but when it comes to this kind of development of business they are kind of aggressive so the, the of course the atmosphere and things like that change and, mm-hmm. and the demands then then a different level uh, towards towards us but i think it went gradually and of course what they uh, had was the knowledge of semiconductor industry because it's it's of course, know that if we had stayed on the Neste oil company, nothing would have ever happened mm-hmm. because Neste would never been so patient that we can uh, that we can uh, be uh, be uh, profitable. Because we know that uh, uh, from that, how long it took for the hafnium oxide to be in the uh, in the reactors and in the in the, uh, in the semiconductor industry. So it took. Ten years, so I would say that the Nestle oil company would have never done it. So of course they they brought a lot of knowledge and, and, and things like that. But I I remember uh, so well that uh, that uh, there was this uh, Ernst Ernst Grandeman uh, from ASM uh, who who was responsible for the integration of ASM uh, from microchemistry to ASM. Mm-hmm. And we had that one meeting, and he said that, uh, oh, oh, we will only sell, um, we will only sell this uh, next year. We will only sell five F two, ah, uh, no, Pulsar two thousands, mm-hmm. only five selected customers. And we ended up doing twenty five. Wow. So that. So was, one customer. No, not one customer. Okay. <laughs> so they were different customers. Sure. Actually, those were all different customers at that time because it was. To uh, sell uh, reactor for research to these these places, ah, I see. Okay. so that they can learn themselves how it works and, and do the research and things like that. So those were mainly uh, reactors for research, not not so much for for any any production. So even with their knowledge of the industry, they still underestimated. They what they, 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 do. they they kind of that's 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 I can I can also say that they underestimated uh, that how they how how interesting and probably important mm-hmm. that technique which will which will be. So um, you were then selling the Pulsar two thousands more for for research. Research at the time, yes, so the for different the different companies. Mm-hmm. So. So then, then, what was the path to getting the the three thousands into into the fabs for production? What were some of the challenges that that happened there? Because I think the challenge was first that 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 ALD in those pools of two thousands it showed that you can actually do the plant mm-hmm. and you can mm-hmm. actually get get uh, the results what the customers wanted. So I think that. The challenge was there, and then then they could see that uh, that it's uh, it's possible. Then they were more uh, willing to, or they could uh, be convinced that maybe then also the PFD and the mm-hmm. But of course, then 
to some companies, of course, then you have to, or not have to, but you 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 show the 300 milliliter print also for their for their officers. So that's how. And one 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 important thing was Asian America had a big role in then doing that work because we were in the background helping, mm -hmm. and then Asian America. Because then at that time also there was a need that you need to have platforms and you have to support those clusters that you yeah. have. You have you have the ALD tool and you have the fluid treatment tool and you have other other deposition servers on the same cluster. What actually is not the case now. No, the not event, at all. Even, mm -hmm. Eventually then that never happened, but that was the around two thousand that was the the, that was the need. Mm -hmm. And then ASM America, of course, could then serve the customers customers better from the from the America side. Because for us it would have been and was diffi difficult because of the time difference. Sure, sure. Yeah. Yeah. So were you at all involved with the the eventual um, technology transfer of the half moon to Intel in their original production there to 2000 2007 uh, of yeah of course I, mm -hmm. I I I visited Intel uh, around 2000 uh, before and after many times mm -hmm. and then uh, it was funny one time one uh, one our account manage account and managers uh, for Intel uh, told me oh Suvi you might know, you might not know how famous you are yet. Because I I visited different uh, mm -hmm. places, in, especially the component research, and then in, that was the in Portland, Oregon. I also mm -hmm. visited um, when, the, when there was this in Santa Clara, first round. But then it was the component research was uh, moved to uh, Oregon, to Portland, this part. There I, I, was, I was many times. So that's why I was kind of famous. I don't know how famous, but <laughs> of course, those people who were dealing with ALD. So yeah. I'm sure maybe many people in Portland, Oregon, hadn't met so many Finnish people <laughs> before either. Yeah, no, it would no, be no. memorable. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah, 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 and and small and and and, 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 and short. <laughs> <laughs> and so knowledgeable about ALD. <laughs> yes. Indeed, but it was, yeah, but that was, but of course then, uh, then later on when that was, that work was done, the basic work that I had to introduce ALD to people, mm -hmm. then, uh, then I didn't visit the company so often, so often anymore. But you had but, laid a really good foundation for the, for the adoption. Yeah, yeah, that mm -hmm. was, that was my, my part. When, uh, they kind of announced, or I don't know what the fanfare might have been <laughs> at the yeah. time. I was too young and didn't know yeah, anything yeah. about the industry then. But when they did add it to the to the production line, was there like a, a great energy at, at ASM? Were people very excited that it had finally been put into production? Was your team very uh, yeah, happy yeah, and yeah, of relieved? Course. Yeah, of course it was. It was, uh, but. <laughs> Because it had taken already so long, mm -hmm. and and uh, so many people and so many things had happened that uh, that it was it was just finally okay now now finally it is and then and 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 and, and around that time it was still like this is you cannot you cannot say anything mm -hmm. you cannot say right. anything and not no about it not, but of course we were happy. Finally, something something happened. Mm -hmm. Of course, ALD had been in, in in some other areas. They did some small production type of work, so so it was not uh, not really the the meeting. And of course, it has mm -hmm. already been in, in the display industry. But of course, it was it was yippee. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I suppose at that point, even the conference had been going for a few years then. Yeah. So people were kind of wasn't yeah the new kid in town so much anymore in terms of a yeah. in terms of a technique. It didn't. Yeah. No, no, it was 
Yeah, but it's sometimes. I have not been thinking of this, uh, what happened uh, for a long time, but now when you ask me to come here, I, I started thinking, how, how was it, how, how it was. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But it needed the uh, effort of so many people. From, from of course from Finland, but then uh, then uh, Asia and America, so I, they made a lot of effort. And, and uh, if I if I think that uh, you have to be really patient, and this was really something, and it was good that ASM was really patient. But of course then, <coughs> of course then it was the companies, not only Intel but other companies also that were pushing that uh, you have to, you should be doing. It's interesting that they, well, of course, Sam is the one who did the acquisition, but if it was it was seen or forecasted by some people in the industry that ALD equipment would be useful and probably prolific at some point, that uh, yeah. you know, were, were there others who were throwing their hats in the ring to maybe buy microchemistry at the time? I think there must have been some other potential buyers but for some reason then Mr. Oil Company then uh, sold microchemistry ASM. But but not not very many. Uh, the thing of um, of ASM is that they have always been more of on the on the uh, how would I say on the transistor side, so there where you have, you have to do good silicon dioxide, and that that's the that's the background. Of course, they had also the furnaces, but they did, but it was a lot to do, and they had a lot of knowledge, and they could see early on, of course, also that uh, that uh, that you have to change that material. Mm-hmm. But when that happens, it's not, not no. So I think. I, and then I, if I think of other other companies who are selling equipment or semiconductors, of course they also like applied. Of course they also did. But ASM, as a small company, smaller, much smaller company, maybe it's more flexible to do to do these kind of things. Sure. And I have heard uh, later uh, that it was not so easy inside ASM to. Uh, to make a decision, there are some people that were very skeptical that uh, if that's a right move or not. Mm-hmm. I would love to talk to uh, Mean Evil. I, I'm not even going to try and butcher, <laughs> butcher his last name, but uh, you know, the architect behind the deal would be really interesting to talk to him. Yeah, but of course it was also evil, but I, I probably not the first one. There was also Chris Verhoeven mm. there was uh, mm-hmm. um, working at ASM America in the sales and, and marketing. So he he was one of the, the people who pushing for this to have to have ASM to acquire microchemistry. So then, after you get to the point where AOD is, is adopted, three hundred millimeter tools are are in fabs now. Mm-hmm. What what has your involvement been from that point then on? What was the the future of your role at at ASM? So before I go that, I, I mm-hmm. say something about Ivo Reinmarker. So sure. So when um, when ASM acquired Microchemistry, Ernst Granemann was the CTO. He was taking care of the integration, but then he moved to this Levitech, another role. Um, and and Ivo Reimark started as the CTO. So since then I, I was working working with him, and I would say that the one thing that uh, what Ivo brought to our company uh, to microchemistry was we already started uh, doing some patents mm-hmm. before even before ASM, but it was kind of exploded. We patented everything mm-hmm. we could when he came. So. I have a lot of credit uh, to him, but 
I have I have more budgets than you do. Know, so. <laughs> I build a big inventor and yeah. That's that's uh-huh. that's his fault, I would say. <laughs> he wrote Suvi on all of these, so <laughs> of course it's not uh, those are uh, like you know group work, so it's uh, mm-hmm. you are not the only one, uh, but your name is on the budget, uh, but, but of course I did a lot of a lot of work. I, I did one episode on this. Uh, maybe it was like three or four episodes ago that was kind of uh, a dive into the history of reactor development in the ALD. And yeah. I remember getting to the point where I was going to talk about some of the ASM tools and trying to go through the IP yeah. to find the right ones that I needed to, to talk about the, the pulsar or whatever it is. Yeah. And I remember it being very difficult because there were so many patents for every little thing yeah. Yeah. That I was like, okay, actually, I don't <laughs> like that. I have so many I need to come through to find the right yeah, ones. So, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. You so really did patent every. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, but I was more in the, in the, in the thing field development, not so much in the reactor mm-hmm. part, but then you have to, of course, because that was the thing that you have to protect your, your yes. IP. So. Yeah. I saw Pekka Soinen's name a lot while I was doing that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Pekka Soinen. Pikku Pekka Pähänen is a most of the team was. Yeah, but then, then my, my role, uh, because 1999 ASM acquired us, but then already then 2001, that was in November, ASM decided uh, to, uh, uh, to uh, close down the manufacturing in Finland and also, also the sales. Uh, uh, and then, then my my work then changed so that I was not anymore leading the group. That was Marko Tuominen. Mm-hmm. You could also, you should also interview, by the way, him. Okay. Marko Tuominen, he knows a lot because I hired him um, 1990, 1998, no, 19, no, 19, no, no. To microchemistry and, and and we have we worked together since I left. So, but he he knows a lot. Uh, he was many times with me visiting the customers also before the intern, not not the other way so much. But he mm-hmm. he has a lot of a lot, a lot of knowledge of what happened. So then then. Uh, 2001, I already said that, that, that I have been visiting the customers a lot, but that increased a lot. I, I mm-hmm. did that, that work a lot. And then there was a time where there was not so much need to visit customers. So and then I, for some times, I did some hands-on work again. Okay. All so, right. So uh, it, was, it was interesting to, to, to part. But that, that was not very long, um, uh, but then in the two, uh, later 2010, uh, no, then 2012 uh, to 2013, uh, I, I, I worked six months at Ace um, and, and then I was a lot in the background in the projects uh, of of microchemistry as a microchemistry and and I was teaching of uh, newcomers because we had this new college graduate program so we got the new people come in who probably not all knew anything about the ALD mm-hmm. so I was teaching and helping and, and, and so on and then uh, what became very interesting to me before I, I stopped working was years previous was selective ALD I, I did a lot of thinking with that. Sure. <laughs> so that was that was really something something new that came along. Mm-hmm. And of course there was the etching part as well, but not so much for me. I it was really the deposition and the, mm-hmm. the selective ALD. But of course uh, the main things happened during the two thousand when it was really a mm-hmm. new and a lot of work. I I remember I was at work at 12 o'clock in the evening uh, uh, because I had to explain to the patent lawyers how ALD works. So that was I was doing for the first patent. Yeah, yeah, I had to say, no, 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 it doesn't work like that. Mm-hmm. 
and it was also for for uh, for a ASM when they acquired us that when they came to organize things and I I, uh, I liked uh, Ernst Kahneman a lot but he was first when he came because we had uh, when ASM acquired us we had a big sales guys meeting so we had to organize presentations to the sales people mm-hmm. of ASM and I studied I, I had my AMP presentation and before I showed it uh, uh, to the to the other people then Ernst Kranemann came and, and changed something in my presentation and then I told him do you know what I know AMP better than you you don't change my presentation yeah, I don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> and after that we were the best friends <laughs> Sometimes it always takes a little complex to then uh, bring two people closer together. Yeah, yeah, but he's really, really a great person. And, and of course, human rights workers as well. So uh, sometimes we were like a little bit like a cat and dog because I, I, I told him what I wanted to. And, uh, but it's, it was really nice. I learned a lot, lot from him. So it's nice to work with him. I'm sure it was a really incredibly dynamic and exciting time. Yeah, yeah, that's why right, because everybody and... was a little bit that now this is something mm-hmm. new and and of course um, for a company like ASM they wanted things happen. Mm-hmm. Right. So, so it was. But of course the, now I don't know. I've not been working in AMP for five years, so I don't know what new things have have happened. So. Maybe next year then in the AMB conference, yes. I, 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 will, I will see yes, as when, when it's here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> in you Finland. mentioned that hopefully you'll be there in the yeah, Helsinki yeah, next yeah, year. Yeah, 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 I can come with the Sulta <laughs> and yes. we, can, we can say, oh, that was already first time deposited or developed uh, 40 years ago. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, it was amazing. Again, if I can harken back to that reactor episode that I, that I did, reading some of Suntala's original patents and the iterations of reactors yeah, that yeah. he conceived already then, like all yeah. the spatial ALB reactors yeah, 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 are there, like yeah. the foundation for everything that it has been like new over the past 20 years is already there in yeah, those yeah. original patents, yeah, which is yeah. really, really amazing. Yeah. yeah. But I still, I like to mention about uh, Ivo Raimarkes, what mm-hmm. was really great from him was uh, that, because it was the uh, plasma ALB. Mm-hmm. Because he he was pushing, and I remember, I think it was 2003, when was it, when I was with him and we visited Genitec, Korean mm-hmm. company, yes. to, uh, uh, to see how, how the plasma ALB could work and uh, what would it be beneficial. And then he pushed for that, that then, uh, then eventually ASM acquired Genitec. That's an interesting one. No one ever really talks about the acquisition <laughs> so much. I feel like the one that's talked about a lot, of course, is the microchemistry yeah. acquisition. But then I feel like the, the Genetech one is kind of lost. <laughs> yeah, but I think it was as important. Yeah, absolutely. Because if you mm-hmm. think of business-wise, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. it was really, really important. Yeah, it's a very thing, synergetic. Thing, thing, thing yeah. for ASM yeah, absolutely. To, to have. And of course, it uh, gave us more opportunity to do uh, different things, to get ex- extra energy. Mm-hmm, That's mm-hmm. What, what, it, what it does. It gets, uh, and then to go lower and lower temperatures. So it's, it was really, really good move for Ivo Reimark. That's yes, why I want to mention it. Yes. So, <laughs> <laughs> Let's give him credit where credit's yeah, due. Yeah, yeah, credit. <laughs> uh, there are many things we can give uh, credit. <laughs> Well, you mentioned a very, very long and exciting career in ALD yeah, yeah. that did culminate in 2016 in Dublin, where you received the ALD yeah, yeah. Innovator Award. Yeah, I was really happy. <laughs> yes, I, as you should be. So yeah. congratulations for that. You were, was it the, the first woman or the first European to, to no, get I, awarded? No, I, I, was, I was the first woman. First of woman. course, nowadays we should, be, we should not separate the women. I was the worst woman, that's what I say. Yeah. But of course, I, I probably got it because I have my name on, on so many patents, more than, more than 100 at the moment. I don't exactly know the number. I have not checked myself, but I can always <laughs> ask, ask Hanno Huoteli at microchemistry. Mm-hmm. 
how many I still have, as I, I, I have now. But either way, I'm sure very nice to be recognized for the work. Yeah, yeah, of course, mm-hmm. yes, yes. And then you are also an ASM fellow. As yeah, well. that's for they they gave me just before I left. And then I have to mention also that the other one who next got the, the AS this uh, this ASM fellow award was Eric Shiro. Mm-hmm. And and. I don't know how much he has been. Uh, he has not been uh, attending the AFD meeting so much, and I don't know how much he is known. But he's really the key person at ASM. If you think of developing the AFD mm-hmm. reactors and, uh, and and also the, the processes, so he he was sent to Finland almost right after uh, ASM acquired microchemistry. I think he was there. Like Or early two thousand, but he came to uh, came to see how the ALD and the F F two hundred how how it works, and, and and since then he was then responsible at ASM America of transferring the processes and the reactors then to ASM America, and then he is really he's really good at ALD reactors, and, and if mm-hmm. if you have a chance, he would be around <laughs> sure to, to yes. also also to. I don't know if you have heard his name. I have heard his Did name, you? and I think either it's been mentioned a couple of times on here, but I definitely yeah. saw it again in my like patent searching. Oh yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, of yes. course, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But he is the he is the other ASM fellow. Yeah, I'm happy to be with him. Yes, I mean, he's in good know, company. But in good yes. company, really good company. <laughs> so now that you have kind of left the the world of ALD in a way, do you? find yourself missing it at all? Do you find yourself wanting to be back part of it? Are you happy to kind of put that part of life behind? Yeah, of course, um, I kind of miss, of course, uh, my colleagues, mm-hmm. because that is something that you, you go to the work and, and then uh, the atmosphere of microchemistry has always been that we, we have time for uh, brainstorming and things like that. So it was, it was really nice. But of course, I a little bit follow what is what is happening, and mm-hmm. now next year it's interesting to go and see yes. after many years that uh, what has changed and what has not changed in the AMD. Do you anticipate you'll be giving a presentation or anything next year, or do you think no, you'll just be no, attending? No, no. Mikko, Mikko said that he will definitely invite me and, and the Tuomo to the, mm-hmm. to the AMD conference, and he told me. Tuomo will probably present something, but Subi, you don't need to do it. <laughs> <laughs> and I was, no, I would not do it. <laughs> anyway, so I have I have given so many presentations during my life. So no need for one more. <laughs> no, no. no, no. So yeah. I, and and then then of course, what should I present anyway? Because mm-hmm. I don't know what has happened, and I I don't. So it's and uh, why to present uh, mm-hmm. something that has already happened? And, well, in some way, what we're doing right now is yeah. some kind of presentation yeah, so that I yes. think will be interesting for a lot of yeah, people yeah, to yeah, hear. Yeah, yeah. So. yeah, because there's <laughs> this, uh, this other other history of, of a- a- mm-hmm. And maybe some people might say, I don't know if she remember, remembers right. And she forgot to say this <laughs> and this because there are so many things. Again, I, I have to thank you for, for taking the time to come down to Bennett today and, and discuss some of these small things that stacked on top of each other to become this this big thing. I think a lot of people in the AOD community do owe, owe a lot to the work and the foundation that you laid back in the, the 90s and, and 2000s. Mm-hmm. And it's really, really great to have you here to, to hear about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. thank so, you. And I hope that people can, uh, I have not been speaking English for many years this much, so I, hopefully they can understand what I have to say. I think there will not be an issue. This is, you know, this is a very common thing with yeah. with uh, yeah. the, the Finns is that they say that the English is not good, but it's better than some Americans or some French <laughs> English, I think. So, <laughs> so thank you again, Subi. This is really fantastic, and yeah, hopefully we will see you at Helsinki yeah, next year for yeah. the ALD conference. Yeah. Be exciting. Yeah. If I'm fine. I'm- Definitely there. Fantastic. <laughs> Good. <laughs>
Thanks for listening to ALD Stories with Benick. To stay updated on new episodes each month, please follow us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or Google Podcasts. We hope you enjoyed the show. I hope to see you again in the next one.